The, the 13th Amendment says uh, slavery is prohibited except for the conviction of a crime. For me as a law enforcement, that makes sense when you see our police statute book. I think when I started in 1998, the statute book was maybe like that. Now it's you know, almost three or four inches thick. Yeah. So if you want to create uh, a nation of slaves, you have to create more laws. And once I recognized that as a police officer, I started doing my policing differently because I recognized me arresting someone for a victimless crime was only serving the prison system, was only serving uh, uh, the corrupt system of systemic uh, system of racism. Because now if I arrest you for a drug charge, you can't live certain places, you can't get certain jobs and things like that. I think that adversely affects the community more than this person having a, a dime bag of marijuana in their pocket. So once I recognized um, I was doing policing wrong, in my 20 years, we've never been trained on the principles of the Constitution. In the academy, we're, uh, we're giving a, maybe a day's worth of the Bill of Rights, but there's nothing in depth to talk about the principles and loving your fellow man and things like that. So I think that goes to the heart. Again, for me, it's education. The lack of education leads to uh, uh, being able to control a society. I can't recall who said it, but those with knowledge, they fear, and those without knowledge, they control. And, and on a, an administrative leave. Correct. I am, I've been, again, a police officer for 20 years. I, if you look at my personnel file, I don't have a, a history of violence. I'm not, you know, I don't uh, insult people. I don't use profanity uh, when I can. Um, so yes, there, right now I'm currently on administrative leave. And if I were to be fired, I guess I would um, argue that I, would, I was wrongfully terminated because, I, again, I didn't use violence. I don't look at kitty porn. I, don't, I'm, uh, I didn't threaten violence on my social media. I know we have a, a social media policy not to use profanity and nudity, things like that. And I censor myself a lot on my social media page when I want to you know, blast someone uh, and use profanity. I, I don't because I, I recognize that I'm, I have to be a professional on and, and off duty. Um, but if I were to get fired, I guess I would seek legal counsel to uh, get my job back. But I also have a few months before I'm eligible to retire, so maybe I'll just bow out sooner than later. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> right. And again, Adam Lanza, this kid with no history of violence, mysteriously, for whatever reason, decides to kill his mother, um, drive to this school that he had no real relationship with, and then kill these children and teachers for, what's the motive, what's the reason? I mean, for me, it didn't make sense at the time, and I still don't, I don't get it. There's never a motive, is there? Right, there's no motive, it, doesn't, it, it defies logic, why? In your experience as a crime fighter, when people perpetrate crime, is there a motive? There's usually, uh, and again, it goes to the war on drugs, there's usually, in, mo in most cases that I deal with, is you know, drug violence, um, drug violence or domestic violence. But for an individual to randomly go to a school and shoot children, it, it, it didn't make sense. And again, you hear, like you said, the six minutes for him to, again, a lot of this, we wouldn't be asking these questions if we had you know, transparency, if we had video showing Adam Lanza getting out of a vehicle, uh, you know, dealing with Santa Hook, going inside the school. You know, I don't have to see Where's dead bodies. I don't have to see dead bodies. Just show me him walking through the halls. Right. No, there's no videos. Now, these modern day schools, no video. It, it doesn't make sense. Well, and isn't it convenient, too, with, with Sandy Hook and Parkland, these shootings occur in predominantly white, rich areas. And then what happens? They dump millions of more dollars into these uh, communities. Oh, yeah. It pulls I, at the heartstrings of the general public. I, I, uh, I made a post on it. I said, you know, how come they dumping all this money into these communities? Is it, is it hush money? So I, that was one of the issues Sun Sentinel had with me because I said, is it, you know, again, asking questions. Because how do they dump all this money into these already rich, rich areas, communities? My issue is I think people, I want to get people to recognize America is changing. She's going through a, 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 a culture shift. I, I tell people now we live in a, a, a fear culture. And I think what I want to ex express to people that we need to be able to uh, ask questions. Um, we need to be able to, to research history, history. For me, I didn't start understanding what was really going on until I, I started reading a few books. I started watching a few documentaries, uh, listening to a few lectures, and for me that helped open my eyes to what's really going on uh, politically, locally, and globally. The hardest part is, is getting people to recognize that they're under <laughs> a, uh, a military psyop and to actually 
open a book, again, and to educate themselves. Because most people in America here are spoon-fed through the, the television, uh, through the, the newspaper and the radio. So to actually open a book, I think that will be the biggest key to get people to actually do their own research, independent of or contrary to what the official narrative is. Because the, the, they say the three truths, the truth that you know, they're telling you, uh, your truth, and then the truth is somewhere in the middle. So we, we have to be able to do our own research and to investigate. I don't know, I, I think our framers, you know, they gave us the Bill of Rights and, and the Constitution. And modern society, you know, again, this is, it plays into the Sandy Hook and uh, the Parkland shooting. The Second Amendment is not there for hunting. And, and I know it may seem, uh, you know, treasonous to the, uh, the traitors of this country to say the Second Amendment is there for corrupt government. I mean, things are going to get to a certain point where we need our weapons to say, no, we're not going to take it anymore. And I think that's, that goes to the heart of the Second Amendment. The average person you know, that is raised through government education, they, they don't understand the Second Amendment. So this is where we need to, I try to present that uh, on my Facebook page, that the Second Amendment has nothing to do with hunting. It's about corrupt government. And when the government tells you, I guess what we saw here in, uh, in the UK with the Alfie Evans story, I don't know if you're familiar with that, where this ch child was dying, the hospital refused to treat him anymore, but they wouldn't let the parents take the child out of the, the country. And again, if that was my child, and if I had a weapon, we, you know, somebody's gonna have the hell to pay. Yeah. So again, we, we need to get back to studying history. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it is on record now, public record now, that the government, again, it, I think it all goes back to the government, deliberately put drugs in certain communities to destabilize them. Uh, drugs, weapons, Gary Webb was a, a journalist that Try to expose the uh, the crack being put in certain communities, and w what happened to him? He committed suicide with two bullets to the head. Yeah. yeah so again, <laughs> again, when you, whenever you start veering off track, they either outright kill you or they destroy your uh, your credit or your. Uh, they either kill you or try to discredit your uh, character. And I think that's what's happening with uh, Professor Tracy, yeah. who I support.